Now, if you feel like you're suffering more from hay fever this year than ever before, you are not alone. Pollen levels are exceptionally high this week and there are warnings for those with lung conditions to take extra care. Here's our science correspondent, Martin Stew, on why it is so bad and how you can ease the symptoms. If you suffer, you'll sympathise. Itchy eyes, you want to rub your eyes and then you can't see. In hay fever season, picnic prep often includes a side serving of antihistamines. Yeah, it's definitely been one of the worst years. I had it, it went away and came back this year. On Sunday, one person every three seconds went to the NHS's website looking for help with their symptoms, triple the number of a month ago. I didn't used to have it at all, um, so it's gradually increased as I've got older, but I don't know if that's me or whether that's the world. According to the Met Office, 18 million people in the UK are allergic to pollen. Grass is the biggest culprit, affecting 95% of sufferers. And wetter summers and warmer winters are seeing the growing season lengthen from March all the way into September. Scientists, in fact, believe the impact of climate change will make the hay fever season 60% more severe in the future. And there's something else contributing, air pollution. Toxic gases like ozone, sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide do two things. Firstly, they irritate your respiratory system, how you breathe, and that can make you more susceptible to pollen. And secondly, they can actually burst the pollen itself in the air, releasing the protein from within, which is particularly irritating. At the moment, air pollution is moderate or high for much of the country. Pharmacists say they've noticed not just a rise in the number of patients, but in the severity of their symptoms too. This year, I must say, it's increased a lot more than previous years. A lot of people say what they've used in the past is not working. Can I have an alternative? So sometimes, yes, we have to give stronger meds. The number one tip, stay indoors and stay hydrated. But don't be tempted by alcohol, which undermines the work your hay fever drugs are trying to do. Martin Stew, ITV News. Sally's in Greenwich this evening on what's been a difficult day for some Londoners. Sally? That's right, Ron Kay. Look, first of all, let's just take a look at this beautiful view, one of London's greatest in Greenwich. You can see off to the left, we've got the city. In the middle here, we've got Greenwich and then Canary Wharf behind it. And over to the right, hiding behind the trees, you've got the Millennium Dome. And if you look towards Canary Wharf, you can see that there is a bit of a haze. There is some pollution, but not all of the pollution is visible. And we have had a high pollution alert today from the, Lord, from the Mayor of London and for tomorrow, the first one since January to say we've got high pollution. And the culprit is ozone. Now, now, you may have heard of the ozone layer that's high up in the atmosphere that protects us from the sun but when we get ozone on the ground that's when it can become dangerous and it's the result of chemicals from combustion from cars fires factories and so on combining reacting with sunlight and that's when it becomes dangerous now if you take a look at this graphic you can see that at the moment we've got the perfect recipe we've got loads of sunlight from these long sunny days we've got lots of warmth that is increasing the rate of reactions and building up uh, the pollution and we've also got stagnant air from high pressure that is stopping the pollutants escape. That's enough from me. Let's have a quick chat now with Simon Burkett from Clean Air in London. Simon, who needs to be worried about this? Who's vulnerable? Well, ozone is one of the most irritant gas gases. Right. So the sort of symptoms that people might experience would be uh, tightness of chest, um, difficulty breathing or, or coughing. The general population should be all right, um, uh, but they should consider reducing activity if they feel those sort of symptoms. But for people who are vulnerable, so the people who are young, people who are older or who have, say, asthma or COPD, those people should consider reducing exertion at these sort of levels of ozone. OK, Simon, is there any good news we can take from this? Is there anything we can do to improve the situation? Well, I think this is about reducing combustion, so we really do want to encourage people to walk or cycle. Don't take that unnecessary car journey. Please don't light up a bonfire in the back garden at the moment. And in the end, if we reduce these pollutants, then we should have a cleaner, healthier, happier, quieter city. I think that's the prize for us all. And very briefly, can we have barbecues? Um, barbecues aren't as bad as bonfires, but I'd encourage people to have it perhaps on a, a different day when it's not quite so hot and a bit windier. All right, Simon, thank you so much. It is a beautiful evening.